Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is an example of a medieval romance. There are various characteristics of a medieval romance. First of all, medieval romances always contain a sense of chivalry. Chivalry includes the idea of courtesy, generosity, valor, which is bravery, um, fairness to enemies, respect for women, by key characters, particularly knights and gentlemen. The focus is usually some kind of hero knight and his noble deeds. A love for a lady is generally involved, hence the idea of a romance, but it may not be the type of love for a lady that you would expect to see. We're not talking about some cheesy romantic line, but instead love and respect. The settings are usually imaginary. They're usually very glamorous. We see this portrayal of castle life that looks glamorous and wonderful. Think about the stories of King Arthur and how glamorous it seems to be part of King Arthur's court. Those were medieval romances. They are usually very vague, so we might know that they're in England, but it's very vague as to where, in some countryside, village, something along those lines. There's often an element of the supernatural, and that element of the supernatural adds mystery and suspense to the work. And there's some kind of concealed identity. Could be concealed identity on the part of the enemy, could be concealed identity on the part of the hero. But somebody is keeping some secrets. That also adds to that suspense, that mystery. And then number three is extremely important. You're going to find that the number three appears in literature a great deal. And any time you see something happening in threes, it should be a flashing light for you to pay attention. The number three has religious connotations. Think about the idea of the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost from Christian religion. Three represents a cycle like birth, life, death, beginning, middle, end. We have things in literature like three wishes, the three fates, even so much as the three little pigs. So anytime you're reading anything, medieval romance or any other genre, pay attention when you start seeing things that come in threes. Definitely is something that you want to notice. In these medieval romances, there is a hero knight. And there are certain characteristics of these hero knights. First of all, they have some kind of mysterious birth, and there's a parent mystery. Oftentimes, these hero knights were born to a set of parents, but through circumstances, end up being raised by another set of parents. And they often do not know who their real parents are. They may not even know that the parents that are raising them are not their own. So there's some there's kind of parent mystery often going on. And that goes along with unknown identity. The hero knight doesn't know who he actually is. And the hero knight must face some kind of extraordinary challenge. And when he eventually succeeds at that challenge, that success helps his nation or his group of people that he is representing. So what in the world does this have to do with Sir Gawain and the Green Knight? Well, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight absolutely have has a sense of the supernatural. Think about the opening when the Green Knight actually comes in to the court. There were stairs on all sides as the stranger spoke, for much did they marvel what it might mean that a horseman and a horse should have such a hue, grow green as the grass and greener it seemed. And it goes on about talking about the green. Literally, this knight is green. His horse is green. That's not normal. That's absolutely a case of the supernatural. This isn't the only instance of the supernatural in Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, but it is one example. The worksheet that you're going to complete with this assignment asks you to list the example that I'm giving you now and also an example of your own. So for this, for my example, make sure you include that the horseman and the horse are actually green. And that's from page 172 of your text, if you're looking it up. 
We also have Glamorous Portrayal of Castle Life from page 177. This piece of text is taken directly after the challenge, and the Green Knight has left after informing Gwen that he expects to see him within a year. And they kind of just go back to their feast. And the good king and Gwen are talking. We have, d with all dainties, double dishes rare, with all manner of meat and minstrel see both. Meat, uh, so we're talking about the great foods there, minstrel see, the music, the revelry that's going on. Chivalric ideals. Again, this is going to appear throughout Sir Gawain, but the example that I pulled is from the moment when the Green Knight has challenged somebody to step forward. The king himself stepped forward when nobody else did, and then Sir Gawain intervenes. And he starts off, I'm not going to go through this whole passage with you, but he starts off by saying, Would you grant me the grace? said Gwen to the king, to be gone from this bench and stand by you there. So he's asking him permission. Can I take your place up there? I'll take the challenge. If I would, if I without discourtesy might quit this board, and if my liege lady misliked it not, I would come to your council before your court noble. So he's going on to say, the lady that he has devoted himself to, that he's pledged honor to, is not going to like it very much if he sits aside while the king takes the hit for everyone. For I find it not fit as in faith it is known when such a boon is begged before all these knights. So he's being noble, he's being honorable, he is willing to fight so that the king does not. And it continues to go on in that passage, again showing examples of chivalry on behalf of Sir Gawain. And of course Sir Gawain is filled with adventure, as most medieval romances are. From the very beginning, when we're setting up the problem, when the knight walks in and sets forth this challenge, which is what this passage is from in front of you, he's going to challenge them. They have one shot of chopping his head off, and then, should it not work, should he survive, then within a year they must travel, whoever that person was, to him, and he will have the opportunity. So, it is a challenge, and here we get this sense of adventure, this sense of, I'm posing this possibility for you, this challenge to you, who's going to take it, and then what is the outcome going to be. And this also sets up the quest of needing to find the Grey Knight, after the initial challenge has taken place. So, Sir Gawain, definitely one of the key examples of medieval romance from literature. I would ask that you go through it carefully, looking for more instances of these. For each one of these on your worksheet, you will need to list one of your own examples. You may not use my example. Please make sure that you include the page number that it came from. You don't need to include the quote. You can include just a summary of it or a paraphrase but you should include the page number that it came from. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. Thanks!